big advantage of such research activities is that you can bring in people that uh, have complementing technologies and complementing experience uh, so that we can address bigger questions that uh, one single group wouldn't be able to. the doctor with some infectious disease, you have fever, you have fatigue, the doctor will usually tell you, well, you have a virus, go home, get some rest, and uh, it will be okay. Every organism is infected with many, many cause of viruses. Some of them cause disease, some of them do not cause disease. These viruses, some of them have been with our existence for many, many generations, speak about later, but some of them are newcomers, like the AIDS virus, the HIV, and there are two main herpes simplex viruses. Herpes simplex virus type 1, which causes cold sores in the lips, and herpes simplex type 2, it causes sexual disease, which is transmitted during sexual intercourse. The first virus, herpes simplex type 1, is infecting us through the lips and after the initial infection it causes wound around the lip and then the virus travels via the nerve system to the ganglia and the virus becomes latent, non-active for many, many years without causing any problem. In some people, however, the virus can re-evolve reactivate from the ganglia and move back to the lip to cause wounds again. We don't know why some of the population have this recurrent infection, whereas in 90% of us we get infected once in life, the virus is hidden in the ganglia and would never go back again to haunt us by forming a, a wound in the lips. In herpes simplex type 2, which causes sexual infection, the virus infects the genitals and again, some of the people it can cause recurrent infection and cause sores in the genitals. In some infected people it infects once and never come back again. About 90% of the population are infected with herpes simplex type 1 and about 30% are infected with herpes simplex type 2. Cytomegalovirus, which is a herpes virus, is very common. It's present in the body of the majority of the adult human population worldwide. And if our immune system is, uh, becomes uh, deficient, uh, which can happen for many different reasons in life, people that undergo surgery for instance, an organ transplant or a bone marrow transplant or even people that are in intensive wards because of uh, acute sepsis, then this virus can reactivate and when it reactivates, it can cause disease that can even lead to death. Cytomegalovirus is the most common infectious cause of birth defects. It's a virus that is not controlled by a vaccine and it is able to shut it off at the critical moments and thus it is uniquely difficult to develop a vaccine against cytomegalovirus. This is a unique virus because it possesses the largest genome among any virus known in human medicine and it induces the most potent immune response that has been described ever in human medicine. Now what are the questions? regarding herpes simplex viruses. How the virus infects us in the lip? How does it replicate? How does it move through the nervous system to the ganglia? And how does it stay latent in the ganglia? First, we have to devise an experimental system which will enable us to study this virus. This is a human virus. We cannot do experiments, of course, with human. So what we do in the lab, we get informed consent from the patient and we get issues that surgeon takes out and usually throw away. So we get a tissue, we infect it with a virus and we study how the virus replicates in the tissue and how the virus is transported from one cell to the next. The two tissues that we are interested in are the target tissues of the virus. One is the skin 
and the other one is a nervous tissue. So once we have an infected tissue, we can put it now in the incubator and see how the virus spread in the tissue. What we find in the lab is in the skin tissue, the virus spread and is transported out of the tissue so that the virus can infect now the second individual. In the nervous tissue, the virus stays within the tissue and cannot spread out. Now what does it teach us? It teaches us how to develop new drugs. There is a drug now against herpes simplex virus. It's called acyclovir. It was developed by a brilliant scientist named Gertrude Ilion, and she developed this drug to block virus replication, and we used for 30 years this drug against herpes simplex virus. But this drug cannot get rid of the virus from our body. It can just down-regulate the replication of the virus. So we would like to develop new drugs that will eliminate altogether the virus from our body. So we use this system to devise new drug. We have one potential drug now that we investigate. This drug was isolated from snake venom and we put the drug on the tissue that is infected with the herpes virus and we see how the compound block virus replication and we get encouraging result with this drug. On one side, we try to understand the immune response and the way our immune system is controlling the virus. On the other side, we try to understand the virus itself, the mechanisms uh, that the virus uses to turn off our immune system to decide if it will be latent or if it will be active, we call it lytic. How does the virus figure out that a person is immunologically compromised? This is the most important question that you wish to answer about this virus, because if you can, then you can develop uh, treatments that will allow you to convince the virus to stay put and to remain latent. We are able to introduce into the virus genes that make the virus fluorescent and that means that you can now see in a fluorescent microscope which are the cells that are infected and which are those that are not. Uh, we tried to use the virus own expression pattern. So when a gene is fluorescent, it is fluorescent because at this exact moment a very important viral protein would be expressed. This actually means that we are able to tell if a virus is coming out of latency. We would like to get drugs that eventually will block the latency. So the virus which is in our ganglia will be eliminated from the ganglia and people would not get this recurrent infection and recurrent problem with this virus. After developing new drugs, the next challenge will be to develop a vaccine. What we would like to have is a vaccine that we can vaccinate babies after first months of life and prevent the initial infection. So these kids would not get infection at all. And this vaccine really will free us from the surge of uh, herpes simplex viruses. If uh, we can identify in our work uh, molecular targets that uh, can be then addressed by small compounds, by chemicals, by new drugs, this would be a fantastic outcome. I could wish I could I couldn't wish for anything more than that.